Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. Previously, I've gone over what would happen if you were to try and beat Pokemon Red and Blue by only using a Ditto in battle. Since then, I've gotten a ton of people asking me if I'd ever do the same thing in the Fire Red and Leaf Green remakes. And as much as people would like to see that, I don't think it would turn out to be as interesting or different enough to warrant another video. So instead, for a remake playthrough, I'm going to use a different Pokemon that people are also quick to call garbage. Slackoth. While on its own, Slackoth isn't necessarily the worst thing ever, but what really holds it back is its ability, Truant. Because of Truant, Slackoth is unable to act every other turn. Essentially, it's like every move it uses has the negative effects of Hyper Beam, and it needs to recharge every time it attacks, even if it doesn't actually do anything the turn before. It's pretty obvious why this ability was originally made for the Sloth Pokemon. As I'm sure you can imagine, Truant can make what would otherwise be an easy fight into a dangerous situation, as Pokemon is a game where a single move can make a huge difference. But anyways, you should all know how this goes by now, so let's get this next part out of the way quickly. The game has been modified so I can choose Slackoth as a starter. Slackoth is not allowed to evolve throughout the whole playthrough. Any necessary HM users are left fainted in the party so that Slackoth cannot be forcibly switched out. And finally, no using items in battle. Here's hoping that people hear me say these things this time. Alright, starting the game, I first spend a little while resetting until I get a slot that has just what I think I'll need to make it through the game. It's important that I take the Pokeball that would normally contain Bulbasaur, as this will ensure that my rival will have Charmander. You'll see why I do this later on. The first battle isn't anything special, it doesn't even matter if you win or lose, but thanks to using Yawn, I'm able to make up for some of my lost turns and win. After I leave Pallet Town, I have to go through Route 1. This time around, though, it's not as simple as it usually is. My Slackoth is slow, so she has trouble escaping from the Pidgey and Rattata here. And because of Truant, defeating them every single encounter results in the damage quickly piling up. It is still just Route 1, though, so it doesn't end up being that much of a problem. Now at this point, to prevent the same thing from happening when I go forward, I stop to grind for a while before I enter Viridian Forest. Now there's a sentence I never thought I'd have to say in my life. However, I make sure that when I grind, I only target one Pokemon, Mankey. Mankey can be found to the left of Viridian City, and at this point, it's one of the only Pokemon I can find that gives effort values to the attack stat. By only defeating Mankey, not only am I leveling up, but I'm also specifically aiming to give my Slackoth's attack stat a little extra boost, which is going to be very important in the long run. Continuously defeating Pokemon like Pidgey and Rattata will grant speed effort values, which are pretty much useless to a Pokemon like Slackoth. Finishing up at level 12, I decide to also do the second rival battle that's nearby. This fight is completely optional, but it never hurts to take out a couple of higher level Pokemon. In a stroke of luck, both his Pidgey and Charmander go down with critical hits. He even calls me out on it after the battle ends. Can't say he's wrong. Getting through Viridian Forest is simple enough at my level. It is only bug catchers here, and by design, they're meant to be pretty weak. Going into Pewter City, we reach this playthrough's first big hurdle, the gym. Right now, my Slackoth's only damage dealing move is Scratch, which isn't very effective against rock types, even despite my higher level. This is made even worse by the fact that the Pokemon here use moves to increase their defense as well. Without a reliable way to take out the opponents quickly, it's easy for Slackoth to get picked off while Truant gives my opponents more opportunities to attack. So to deal with this problem, I train it to level 19 where it learns Faint Attack, which is a dark type move. Dark type counts as special damage in this game, and although Slackoth isn't really a special attacker, it'll help with getting over the massive physical defense of Brock's Pokemon, taking them down within two or three hits. With the first badge claimed, I'm more than ready for the upcoming areas. Slackoth is more than strong enough to deal with every trainer between here and Cerulean City, and it's just a matter of having the patience for her to get it done. One thing to note about the route after Pewter is that there is a hidden Orinberry on the ground here. This is the first hold item that I can obtain in this game, and it is the only health-restoring berry that I'll see for a while, so it's important to pick it up. If you weren't aware, Fire Red and Leaf Green have a few hidden berries marked by a particular grass tile. The majority of these aren't going to be that helpful for this playthrough, but they're alright early on. After getting through Mount Moon, I come to two helpful characters. These two will teach Slack off the moves Mega Punch and Mega Kick. At this point in the game, all of the moves my Slackoth currently knows have outlived their usefulness, aside from Faint Attack. And although these two new attacks might not have the best accuracy, they're too powerful to not make use of right now, especially since Slackoth will get the same type attack bonus from them. The next gym battle is against Misty. 
I figured that I was over leveled for this fight, but apparently a mega kick still isn't enough to take her Starmie down in one hit. This means that she'll heal it next turn and finish me off before I can attack again. Even using a person berry to prevent confusion wasn't too helpful. My only choice is to come back when I can deal a bit more damage. Next, I head north to battle my rival. Because his Pokemon don't hit as hard as Misty's, I decide to give Slack off the Orenberry to make things a bit easier for it. The biggest problem with this fight is that his first Pokemon, Pidgeotto, likes to lower my accuracy with Sand Attack, so Mega Punch and Mega Kick are even less reliable. Sure, I still have Faint Attack, but it's not strong enough for me to rely on it for the whole battle. Once I take down his Charmander, though, the battle is pretty much over, as his Abra only knows Teleport and can't actually hurt me. From here, I go and beat all of the trainers north of Cerulean City. Near the end of this area though, right around here, you can pick up the TM for Secret Power. Secret Power is a normal type move with 10 less power than Mega Punch, but better accuracy. It also has a chance to cause secondary effects, so naturally I'll be giving this to Slack Off. Once I'm done here, I challenge Misty again. This time, a Mega Kick is able to one-shot Starmie, so as long as the move hits, there's no trouble at all. With two badges claimed, I start to head towards the next one at Vermilion City. Along the way, something to note is that on this route here, there is a hidden Citrus Berry. In this game, a Citrus Berry restores the holder's HP by 30, whereas in Gen 4 and onward, it restores 25% of the holder's max HP instead. A decent item, but its current Gen 3 effect means it can only be useful during the earlier parts of the game. There is also a rare candy over here as well. With how much grinding these playthroughs take, you better believe that I'm going to be making sure to get all of these along the way. Also, at level 31, Slackoth learns the move Covet. This is a weak move that pretty much functions as the normal type version of Thief. I'll be needing this later on, so it's important to make sure Slackoth gets the move. Before I can actually enter the gym, I first have to deal with the rival battle on board the SSN. In preparation for that, I make sure to deal with every trainer I possibly can in order to keep Slack off level up. In this battle, three of his Pokemon have evolved since last time. However, their actual levels haven't increased by very much. Because of the headache his Pidgeotto can still cause me, I made sure I was powerful enough to sweep through everything quickly. Going into the battle with Lieutenant Surge, I give Slack off a Cherry Berry to stop him from paralyzing me. His Pokemon aren't too much to worry about and each go down with one hit. His Pikachu and Raichu waste time going for double team instead of attacking me, and that doesn't end up helping them at all. Now that I'm done here, I make my way to the right of Cerulean and towards Rock Tunnel. Once I'm there, I immediately stop to do something very important. In this area, you can find Onyx in the wild, and each one you encounter has a 5% chance of holding a Hard Stone, an item that increases the power of Rock-type moves. Although it takes a while, I eventually find an Onyx with a Hard Stone and use Covet to steal it. Now after going a bit deeper into Rock Tunnel, you can find another move tutor that teaches one of your Pokemon Rock Slide. This is a good Rock type move for Slack Off, and is obviously why I wanted to get my hands on a Hard Stone here as well. Going into Lavender Town, the next important battle is against my rival again. At the start of this playthrough, I mentioned that giving my rival Charmander was important, and it's here that that starts to come into play. Of the three Pokemon Growlithe, Execute, and Gyarados, the rival will now own two of these Pokemon depending on what starter he has. Because he chose the Fire type, he gets Execute and Gyarados. This is exactly what I want, as this results in three of his party members being weak to Rock-type moves, while also only having one Intimidate user. However, that doesn't make this particular battle a walk in the park. Because his Gyarados has the ability Intimidate, it automatically lowers my attack power once it comes out. And since I'm doing a playthrough with only a single Pokemon, I'm forced to deal with that for the rest of the battle once it happens. The Execute isn't a pushover either, and has moves like Reflect and Leech Seed, which are devastating to Slack Off who can't attack every turn. And don't forget, the next opposing Pokemon comes out after I land a hit and knock out the previous. This guarantees that every new Pokemon that comes into battle will get a free turn against Slack Off. This is obviously very problematic against teams with 5 or 6 Pokemon. Despite my high level, I'm unable to win this time, and I'm going to have to put off this battle for now. Next I head to Celadon City. The two important battles here are the Gym Leader and the first encounter with the boss of Team Rocket. But before I deal with that, I stop to get my hands on another important item. At the Rocket Game Corner, one of the prizes you can get is the TM for Shadow Ball. Since it costs a good amount of coins, instead of gambling for it, I head to the right of the city and look for Wild Meowth. This way I can grind and use Covet to steal any nuggets that the Meowth happen to be holding. After a little while, I can buy enough coins for the TM. 
Shadow Ball is very useful because it's a powerful ghost type move. And because Game Freak logic, all ghost type moves prior the Gen 4 inflicted physical damage, so Slack Off can make use of it in this generation. Even though Mega Kick is a strong move, it's far too unreliable to keep around, especially with the game's trainers starting to get a lot stronger and have more team members. Anyways, after going through the Rocket Hideout, I meet and battle Giovanni for the first time. His first two Pokémon are Rock-type, which is one of the reasons I got Shadow Ball before coming here. Rock-types have good physical defense, but they're not able to resist the Ghost-type. Overall, his team doesn't rely on any strategies that inflict status conditions, so it's just a matter of Slack Off being able to take some hits. After I finish this, I return to the Pokémon Tower to attempt the Rival Battle again. Now that I'm a higher level, I stand a better chance, but his Pokémon can still be pretty disruptive with their moves, so things could easily still go badly. However, I manage to win. It should go without saying that the rest of the tower is incredibly easy. Because I have a Ghost-type move, I can easily one-shot every single Pokémon that gets in the way here. So getting to Mr. Fuji at the top doesn't take long. With that out of the way, I finally head to the fourth gym to battle Erica. I go ahead and give Slack off the Citrus Berry I picked up, as this is probably the last battle where it'll be of any use. However, that ends up being unnecessary because I get lucky with all of her status moves missing me. Now what I'm about to do next is probably something you wouldn't expect for this playthrough. Before I can move on, I need to stop and capture at least 30 different kinds of Pokémon. Although this is a bit tedious, one of Professor Oak's aides will give me the item finder once I do. The reason I want the item finder is for the Snorlax that is blocking the road ahead. After it's defeated by using the item finder on the exact tile that it was located, I will now be able to pick up a hidden leftovers. Ordinarily, you don't need the item finder to collect hidden items, and can just pick them up if you know where they are. But for whatever reason, there are a select few items in the game that require this method to pick them up. I really couldn't tell you why this is the case. But regardless of all that, I now have the Leftovers, which is a hold item that restores HP every turn. As you might have guessed, this is an incredibly important item for Slack Off, and it's pretty much going to be required for the rest of the playthrough. Next I head to Fuchsia City, where the next gym battle awaits. With no game-breaking glitches occurring this time, I go into the fight with Koga, more than prepared. His Pokémon will always try to poison me, so a single-use berry won't help too much. His muck is also especially annoying because of how it likes to use Minimize. I get to his final Pokémon, but I'm unable to beat him. For now, I go to the Sylph building in Saffron City. I need to eventually complete this area anyway, so I also use it as an opportunity to train for Koga. Several battles against Rocket Grunts later, I arrive at the next rival battle. It's here where his team starts to get especially dangerous, and the leftovers are pretty much mandatory to stand a chance. However, another major problem is that his Pidgeot, who still comes out first, can now use Feather Dance, which lowers Slack Off's attack by two stages. I can still hurt it with Rock Slide, but then his Gyarados comes in and lowers Slack Off's attack by another stage with Intimidate. Despite this, I'm able to knock it out with Rocks, but once he sends in his Charizard, my Sloth is burned away before I can even get a chance to hit it. So as is usually the case with these videos, I've reached the point where despite being an absurdly high level, I need to go and grind to an even higher one. I get Slack Off's level into the 70s before attempting Koga again. This time I easily get through most of his team and only his Weezing is able to put up a fight. I take it down and claim the fifth badge. My rival's team would still be a threat to me at this point, so I grind Slack Off all the way to level 80 before trying again. This time I'm able to outspeed his Pidgeot, taking it out with Rock Slide before I can use Feather Dance. There is no way to stop Intimidate though, so that's what the extra levels are mostly for. Rock Slide cuts through Gyarados and Charizard. His Execute manages to paralyze me, but it's nothing too troublesome. The final Pokémon he sends out, Alakazam, is another one of the main reasons I got Shadow Ball. Alakazam is an incredibly strong psychic type, but its physical defense is its weak point, and with Shadow Ball I can cut through him with a super effective physical move. I managed to beat my rival this time, and although my health may still be green, that's only because of the leftovers. If it wasn't for them, I guarantee you that Slack Off wouldn't have been able to survive. Right after this battle, I have the second encounter with Giovanni. Surprisingly, it's not as easy as you'd think it would be after all that grinding. I might be able to take down most of his Pokémon with one hit, but it's very likely that I'll get poisoned early on. Even with the leftovers and being level 80, I can just barely survive this. With Team Rocket chased out of Saffron, I can finally go to this city's gym. Slack Off is powerful enough to breeze through Sabrina's team. This one ends up being really easy as I'm able to deal super effective damage to all of her Pokémon. 
With another badge in hand, I head to Cinnabar Island to battle the next leader. Blaine is a bit of a problematic opponent. Ordinarily, in any casual playthrough, you just destroy him with pretty much any water type you can get your hands on. But in the case of this Slack Off playthrough, I have to deal with two of his Pokemon having Intimidate, and spamming what is one of the strongest fire moves in the game. Not only that, but if I happen to get burned, then Slack Off's physical attack power will take an even more severe cut. Even during an attempt where Fire Blast missed me a handful of times, I still lost to his last Pokemon. But coming back after a bit more training, I'm able to make it through this time. At this point in the game, Covet is no longer useful. I mainly just kept it around because its high amount of PP made it useful for grinding. But at this point, I'm going to be taking on the strongest battles in the game one after another, so I finally replace it with the move Attract, before heading to the final gym leader. For the last battle against Giovanni, he has five Pokemon, along with lots of Hyper Potions. To keep my Sloth alive, I use Attract on some of the male Pokemon in order to stall for Leftover's recovery. It's also worth noting that here in the remakes he has two Rhyhorn, where in the original games his final Pokemon was a Rhydon instead. His Pokemon also don't spam the one-hit KO move Fissure either, so this battle is a lot more manageable for someone using only a single Pokemon. With only the power of a sloth, I've earned all eight badges. But before I can head to the Pokemon League, I have another encounter with my rival to take care of. This fight at first goes really well. I still outspeed his Pidgeot, and now he saves his Gyarados for much later in the fight. However, his Execute still paralyzes me, which ends up making me unable to land the single Rock Slide I need against his Charizard. It takes another try, but this time I'm able to hit it and win. Now you all know what happens next. In preparation for the Elite Four, I go and get Slack off up to the max level. With this being as strong as she can possibly be, this is where the real challenge begins. Next, I teach Slack off the move Return, replacing Secret Power. Now that I'm used to using a track to stall the opponent, I don't need to rely on the chance of paralysis that Secret Power has for indoor arenas. No doubt, my Sloth is at the highest level of friendship, meaning that Return will have a power of 102. This is the strongest normal type move that I can give her that doesn't cause recoil damage. And with that, I'm ready to begin. The first member of the Elite Four is Lorelei. With the literal power of Sloth Friendship, I can one-shot her first Pokemon, Dugong. However, her second, Cloyster, is the absolute worst thing ever. Because of its incredibly high physical defense, I can't take it out with one attack, which means I have no choice but to go through her pockets of full restores as well. And to make matters worse, it uses the move Hail, and then stalls using Protect and Dive. The only chance I have to hit it again is when the hail stops, and it needs to spend another turn bringing it out again. Luckily, the leftovers keep Slack off strength up for everything that's next. Slowbro is part psychic, so I'm able to get rid of it with a single Shadow Ball. Lapras hits hard with Surf, but I can still deal with it with Rock Slide. Her final Pokemon Jinx is also part psychic, so I just need to land another Shadow Ball. It has the potential to put Slack off to sleep and ruin everything, but luckily Lovely Kiss doesn't have 100% accuracy. The next battle is against Bruno. In this battle, it's not possible to take out either of his Onyx with one hit. This means that I'm likely going to get hit with Rock Tomb, which lowers my speed. This comes into play once his Hitmonlee is sent out. It always uses Brick Break against me, which does a good amount of damage. It's not enough to take me out, but the problem is that he's softening me up for his Machamp. This Machamp is the reason I needed to retry this battle a few times. No matter what, it'll always go for Cross Chop. I needed this to miss me two times in a row so Slack Off can finally respond, KOing it with a single return. Once I'm able to get an attempt where that happens, his other Pokemon don't pose much of a threat. The third battle is against Agatha. Her first Gengar usually goes for Double Team. It's free as long as my Shadow Ball hits it. Golbat is also no problem either, but the real trouble starts when her Arbok comes out. This is another Pokemon with Intimidate for its ability, and it can sometimes survive a single return. And while I'm trying to hit it, it'll constantly use Sludge Bomb, so during that time, I'm likely to be poisoned. If that happens, it's easy for her second Gengar to come out and finish me off. After some retries, I managed to get through the Cobra without getting poisoned. However, at this point, her remaining Gengar and Haunter will use moves like Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Nightmare. This is very frustrating, as I constantly wake up during the turns that Truant takes away, meaning that I can be put back to sleep immediately. Miraculously, I get through these two Pokémon the first time I get through Arbok without getting poisoned. The last member of the Elite Four is Lance. 
This first Pokemon is Gyarados, so no matter what, I have to go into this one with a cut to my attack power. The Gyarados itself isn't hard, but the next Pokemon, Aerodactyl, is something else. Because of Intimidate, I can't finish it with one hit. Only put it down into full restore range. And while I'm struggling to finish it quickly, it'll constantly use Ancient Power, a move with a small chance to buff every single one of its stats. By the time it's dealt with, his Dragonite comes in to finish whatever is left of my sloth. However, it's not impossible. Although it may have taken me an eternity to make this battle go my way, I managed to get to his Dragonite with enough HP to survive and use Attract. From there, I have to hope that I can immobilize him long enough to take it down, while keeping my HP high enough to survive the turns that he does attack me. Once this is done, I have to do the same to his two Dragonair. They may be weaker than his Ace, but they could still finish me if I'm not careful. Getting through Paralysis at the end, I beat his last Pokemon with a single return. So although my Sloth might have been roughed up, she managed to slay all of Lance's dragons. Now it's time for the final battle against the rival. Sadly, things don't start off too well. His Pidgeot is now faster than me and will start the battle off by using Feather Dance putting me at a severe disadvantage. His second Pokemon, Alakazam, also gets a critical hit and knocks my Sloth out right away. Trying again, I make it to his third, Exeggutor, who proves to be one of the most infuriating things ever. By using Attract, I'm able to keep it from killing Slack off, but it continues to use Sleep Powder, making it difficult to land a hit on. At least this time, it's now weak to Shadow Ball, but because of Feather Dance, I can't one-shot it. But after about a thousand turns, I'm able to knock it out. His next Pokemon is Rhydon. I'm able to do neutral damage with Shadow Ball, but once again, because of Feather Dance, I just can't hit hard enough. At this point, it seemed as though I'd finally hit a wall. Replacing my held item to make up for the lost attack power was out of the question, so there was little else I could really even do. But despite this, I'd figured out a plan. So after a lot more retries on this fight, I eventually realized that his Pidgeot has a very small chance to use a different move instead of Feather Dance, either Sand Attack or Aerial Ace. I constantly reset until I get that golden opportunity, and don't even make an attempt on the battle unless I do. During one of those occasions, I make it to Rhydon again. I can hurt him, but its physical defense is still too high, and my Sloth just gets knocked around even more. Still, I wasn't ready to give up, and I considered what my other options were. Using the TM that I got from Misty at the start of the game, I replace Return with Water Pulse, the only water move that Slack Off can possibly learn. Now once again, after getting an attempt where Pidgeot doesn't use Feather Dance, I make it to Rhydon and I'm able to take it out with a single Water Pulse. With two Pokemon left, my rival will then send out Gyarados. By now, I'm sure you know what that means. I still have Rock Slide though, and with two hits, I can knock it out and get to the last Pokemon, Charizard. However, during this attempt, my HP was just too low, and it was able to easily put my Sloth down. But by this point, I was well aware of everything I needed to do with this battle. After a lot of retries, each one dependent on Pidgeot not using Feather Dance at the start, I get the luck I needed and reach Charizard with enough HP to take a hit from it. From there, I also need his Fire Blast to miss me at least once. And luckily, it does, and I'm able to defeat it with a single Rock Slide. And there you have it. With that, I've beaten Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green using only a single Slack Off, and without the aid of a single item in battle. With the power of Sloth Love and Sloth Friendship, I proved that even one of the weakest Pokemon in the game has the potential to be a champion. There isn't much else for me to say at this point, but I think that after all she's been through, I think Slack Off has more than earned the chance to loaf around for a little while. My name is Picaspri, and thanks for watching.